Class is in session. Welcome everyone. Today we're going to be looking at a case study. We're going to be in a negative cash flow situation, a very, very, very high negative cash flow situation. I'm going to need your help in the comments to give me feedback, give me ideas, your thoughts. What would you do in this situation? Or if you are in this situation, listen closely because some of these ideas I'm going to present to you are very creative ways of getting ourselves out of a negative cash flow situation and on pace to a very, very much more efficient, better place to be with our personal finances. So with that being said, let's take it to the whiteboard. Four major numbers on the left-hand side. We have income at $6,450 a month. We're dealing with a husband and wife, so combined income, that's where we're at right now. Our total cost of living, expenses, all together, debt payments, everything, $11,135.64 per month. Yes, that is correct. So that means 64.50 is coming in, and we got 11,135.64 going out. This has been going on for a few months now. Now, technically, the number has gradually been increasing over time, so it's been a little bit of, of, a, of a long period, but it's really gotten to the point where we literally only have a few more months before we put ourselves in total financial ruin where we're gonna be backed up against the wall in terms of things going into collections, things ending up late and that such. So as of right now, I'm recording this video in October of 2023. As of right now, this family, this husband and wife has not been late on any of their debt payments so far. Nothing's late, so credit has not been tanked yet, right? So keep that in mind. We have a total debt of $392,592.27 with a negative cash flow of $4,685.64. We have savings. We have $13,000 in savings. We have a 401k for $447,000, and we have a brokerage account for $65,000. These are the numbers on husband's side. Wife also has a 401k. Wife also has a brokerage account. I didn't include those numbers, right? I just put that off to the side. Well, I'm just looking at his current situation right now because I'm dealing with working with the husband as of right now, right? So with that being said, the debts, right? Wife has debt, husband has debt. Right here, I'm analyzing some of the main debts that husband has under his name that we might be able to do some work with, right? So this is the debt layout here. All of these are credit cards. These are the balances owed. These are the monthly minimum payments. These are the interest rates all together. $631 is going towards credit card debt pay down, right? We have a mortgage for $237,989.82. Total mortgage payment all together is $26,5908. Interest rate is 2.25% value of the property is really high. We have well over 600K in, in valuation there on the property. So there's a ton of equity that we can potentially use to our favor as a, as a debt tool to do velocity banking. But as of right now, no velocity banking is being done at, the, at this very moment. Just can't do it, not gonna happen. We need to do some other moves first. I've identified five moves. These are all, for the most part, conservative moves, right? The, the, what I'm illustrating are conservative results. It could be way better, right? And this is where I want you to come in and you tell me where you would increase more attention on, be more aggressive about, or if you have a totally different idea after you've got the full analysis here, go ahead and comment that as well because I definitely wanna take your feedback. I, I respect your thoughts as well. So the very first move that I initiated on the phone call was, hey, how do we bring that down? Okay, fine. You know, when it comes to personal finance, pretty straightforward. How do I create a gap between what I make and what I spend, right? If I'm in a position where I spend more than what I make, I have to bring this number down. I have to. Like, it, it's not a if, and, or but. I have to bring this number down, especially if I'm if I don't have that mindset of 10x yet, I haven't had that paradigm shift, that light bulb switch where if I'm only making this, how do I simply make this much to flip it and then maintain the lifestyle that I was living? The issue with that, from what I've seen and witnessed, when people dramatically increase their income without the discipline of stewardship, guess where this goes? Uh-huh. It ends up right back. It's just at a, a bigger numbers, bigger numbers now. So I've seen this happen so many times over that we think we can just earn our way out of our problems, which 
you absolutely could do with stewardship, proper stewardship, spending less than what we make and being disciplined about that, sticking to a cost of living number, sticking to a lifestyle, regardless of our income rising, right? So just keep that in mind of the current situation here. So the very first move was, hey, how do we reduce expenses? I was able to identify at least $1,000, like easy $1,000 that we could cut to reduce expenses. Now this number could be as high as like two grand. It could be as high as $4,685.64, depending on how radical of a lifestyle switch you want to take. So I'm pretty like, when I work with people, I like to measure. How willing are you to dramatically reduce your lifestyle? The other thing I, I try to keep in mind here is, although this is a terrible financial situation right now, negative cash flow of that amount of money, I'm confident that this husband and wife can figure out ways to increase their income and reduce expenses, but not at the cost of like eliminating all fun out of their household and life and and all of the unnecessary items in their in their household like I, I like to develop a gradual process of reduction of waste if i can reduce as much waste as possible so that's just being more intentional with my personal finances let's go let's do that and then we look at, okay, can we get rid of the subscriptions? No, you want to keep that for the kids? All right. Can we get rid of cable? Cool. Let's get rid of cable. Keep the Wi-Fi, right? Keep the internet. Gotcha. Basic cable. Can we cut dining out in half? So by 75%. So we start at 50%, but then gradually increase to 60, then 70, then 80, then 90, you know, like a gradual process. When, when you do an immediate lifestyle switch, I've noticed people fall off the wagon after a couple of months. So I like to take a gradual approach to it. So I identified $1,026. And again, that number could easily be higher. But in the first month, this is what we're committing to. And then I told them, hey, if we just increase that by $100, $200 each month, then you're going to get in the, in the rhythm and it's going to become fun. We want to make this a fun process, even though we're in a very serious financial situation. Let's remember to keep it fun. Keep it moving. Second thing, redirection of cash flow. This whole case study is going to show you how we redirect money, assets, and the flow of money to put us in a better situation overall. There's going to be some cons to this, but I believe the net payoff will be better. So redirecting cash flow looks like, hey, they're contributing to 401ks. What if we temporarily stopped it all together? That's one option. Or what if we reduce it all the way down to just the match? They agreed to do that. That redirection might give us another hundred dollars or so if we take it down to the to the match. I think it would be more, probably like two hundred or so. Uh, so I actually only factored in like a hundred dollars there into my equation. The third move is prior to them speaking with me, they already did a four hundred one k loan of thirty three thousand dollars. So we're gonna use that thirty three grand, and we're gonna pay off some debt to increase our credit score, not just for the sake of cash flow. We're doing this to increase our credit score so that we can go to the fourth move here, which is to position ourselves to apply for a first lien HELOC, because I think that would be the better move long term. So if you were to look at all the different debts, and I'm actually gonna make another video where I show how to fully maximize that thirty three that thirty three thousand to get the most amount of cash flow from from debt payoff. And I'm going to show you that even in doing that, we're still in a negative cash flow position, but I'm still going to present that option to you when I make another video, which then leads us to our fifth mood, fifth move, which is velocity banking. Once we have the first thing HELOC in place. So in my opinion, I think the best way to position us for a first lien HELOC in this particular example is we have to pay off a lot of husband's utilization debt first. So these debts are in his name. The mortgage is in his name only. So we need to improve his credit score. It's in the mid 600s. I'd like to get it to 720 or higher so we can get the best rates, best offer, best deal from a bank on a first lien HELOC position, right? And then I can do velocity banking. So when you, when I ran all the math here, total estimated reduction with all these different moves is around 1,757 bucks, which would bring the negative cash flow position from 4685.64 down to 2,928.64, which gives us about 4.4 months where if you're wondering, well, how do I come up with that other money? What have they been doing to come up with the, with the negative is they've just been adding debt to credit and then pulling from savings. 
So with savings alone, we would have about four and a half months before that money runs out and then we're right back into debt again, okay? And when we take out that 401k loan at the 33 grand, their monthly payment's gonna be $700. So what actually ends up happening is we reduced our expenses by actually only $1,057. Because although we took this 33 grand and we paid off all these credit cards, right? So we, we, we paid that off, pay that off, pay that off, pay that off, pay that off. And we paid off 11,290 and you'll get 33 grand when you, when you add up all those balances and then 11,290, you're gonna redirect $631. So that comes into this number, but then that 631 gets eaten up by this 700. It's like, oh, well, why would you do that? Because again, I'm trying to increase cash flow, not uh, increase credit score, not necessarily increase the cash flow for this particular move because I'm trying to get to this. Then that will help me overall. So we're in October, 2023, November, December, January, February, four months is when I run out of cash. So preferably between December and January, if I pay off all these utilization credit cards now, it hits my credit report. I keep paying my bills on everything else. My credit should jump, utilization debt goes down, position myself, build a relationship with a bank, apply for a first lien HELOC. Once I've done all the pregame work, for Velocity Banking, let's say we get approved for a first position HELOC where we move this entire mortgage, gets paid off, and then it gets moved into a first position HELOC with the amount of equity that they have, it wouldn't be too much of a stretch to get about 400 grand, probably could even get a half a mil, maybe even more than that, right? So I'm just gonna estimate around 40, 400K, which is like 70% LTV, some, somewhere around that. So at 400K, I would owe say 237 now i wouldn't actually owe 237 by december or january right it'd be a little bit less so i'm just overestimating here and i'm overestimating on an interest rate of 8.5 percent so i'm going off the prime rate so what would happen is when you go from a regular mortgage to a first lien heloc you are now only obligated to pay the interest on that debt so the so the net output is gonna be $1,685.76 based on this number owed at this interest rate. So I know I can get a much lower rate, especially if I increase my credit score. So again, I'm just overestimating on that, overestimating on this. So it leaves about a $973.32 difference from that number of the mortgage. So that's how much less the negative cash flow position puts me in, right? So what I put when you factor in minusing the 700 from this 1757 number and then minusing that number and then i and then i minus escrow and taxes and insurance i'm now down to around 2928.64 expense out is 9378.64 income in no changes to income 6450 going into the first position heloc around december january okay now should this work out i'm immediately going to move a bunch of other debt into the first position HELOC, I'm already in a negative position. All I'm doing now is rerouting all the funds to the home equity line of credit because I just created all this capital to buy more time. Because come February, what happens? My savings runs out, 292864, my savings runs out, right? So I could have just thrown the savings into the first lien HELOC, but just know that the, the balance is not gonna be going down. The balance is gonna be increasing month, month to month because I'm throwing debt in there and I still have a, a higher output than income coming in, right? What we didn't talk about is how they're gonna increase their income. Wife has an entrepreneurial role, right? An entrepreneurial role, I said that too fast, has a business, she has the ability to make more money and then he's helping her do that. So there could be potential there where the income can rise. Not even gonna count that, right? Because I just wanna see what it, what everything would look like when it's all said and done. Where do we end up at? So at 237,000 owed between December and January, these are wife's debts. These are all her credit cards. Again, balances, monthly payments, interest rates, all at higher rates than the 8.5. Then. And yes, even that 7.5 is higher than our 8.5 because our 8.5 is gonna be paying a little bit less because of all the money that we're throwing in there. Technically, no, for the time being, because why? Again, you still have a higher output, so the balance is increasing. The balance is increasing and so is their interest only payment, right? But what's happening is I'm just buying more time because I have all that credit and I got all that space. What am I buying time for? I'm buying time to fix my lifestyle choices and to increase that income. 
That's what I'm really buying time for. And all I'm doing is finessing and finagling right now. I'm doing this. I'm like moving things around, borrowing from Peter to pay Paul. I'm buying time while trying to develop better stewardship over my money to avoid the radical things. Like a radical move. Like Dave Ramsey would tell you, sell the damn house, sell your car, uh, cut up all your credit cards. I don't know, maybe pull from investments and just pay everything off. All right? That That's, you know. That's literally the easiest thing to say, right? It's the easiest, hardest thing to do though. It's easy, map it out the other way, but it's so hard, who's actually gonna do it? Very few people will do it. Those that have done it, comment below if that's you, if you actually were like, yeah, I sold everything and just started over again. That works too, that is a strategy. This is a strategy of leverage, right? So if you don't agree with it, that's fine. Comment below, I don't agree with anything you just said in this video then so that's totally fine. It's your opinion. Let's conversate, dialogue, see how we can help more people. Maybe you make a video, right? And you go and help people. With wife's debts, if you add it all up, it's 35,922. Understand that around December, January, these balances are gonna be a little bit less because I'm recording these numbers in October of 2023 and keeping it the same, right? For the purpose of just overestimating what the ending balance would be. So if we did a chunk, then we reduce cash flow coming out of the first lien HELOC by $1,343, right? So we bring it down to around this number, around $1,585.64. If we continue to do the other things that I said was, you know, keep, you know, each month increase reduction by $100, then we'll probably be at a negative cash flow of around a thousand bucks, and this will be February, 2024. Balance on the HELOC is now overestimated around 275K. After a month or so, when wife's credit score starts to rise because now husband's utilization debt is now extremely high. Everything is now in one location. I would have wife go and apply for a 0% credit card and then husband as well just to see if we can get something. If I can get a 0% credit card anywhere from 10 to 20K, I'm gonna see what else, what other debts can we move into there or out of here to reduce that interest only payment, right? 275k 275k times 8.5 percent yeah it's now one thousand nine hundred forty seven dollars and ninety one cent right on on that money owed the payment's going to keep going up but when it when you see the net net number of all the other moves that we're making we're gonna be somewhere around here february 2024 i'm now out of money right so at this point, savings is at zero, right? This is assuming income did not increase. Only thing we did was decrease the expense number and we got it with all that moves, we're still negative, right? So this isn't like, we're not at total victory yet. We're not at the home run, not the finish line. It's not done yet. So these are the three other things that I put here, which was gotta increase the income, maybe withdraw money from the brokerage account to buy more time. Maybe not all 65K, but a good amount that would maybe pay off some more debt. We have a car loan I didn't throw on here. We have student loan debt that I didn't throw on here. So that's the only other debts that remain outside of the first lien HELOC. I could drive all debts into the first lien HELOC and that would put me into a like a negative 200 or like almost break even, right? Almost break even. But now my HELOC is nearly maxed, would be almost maxed out. So I don't wanna max out my HELOC. I wanna keep space in there because I'm buying time, right? So at a negative $1,000 at 275 dollars with a credit limit of 400K, I've got like 12 months to really figure things out, right? Get that, get that income higher. And if I can continue to reduce more costs along the way, I'm gonna try and do that. So that is a full breakdown of this case study here dealing with a negative $4,000 plus dollar cash flow position. It's scary, it's tough. If you're out there, you're in a negative cash flow position, paycheck to paycheck, barely breaking even, barely cash flowing any money. I have a ministry of finance called Finance Geek Ministry. Love for you to join in. You click the link below. It's the first link says join Finance Geek Ministry. You get registered and you get a free course and you're gonna get put around a, an entire community. We gather about two times a month. And then there's also things that you can do in the course and there's things that you can do to exchange your social currency to get free counseling coaching, strategic financial strategy sessions from me completely for free. You don't have to come out of pocket financially. You're in a negative situation. I don't expect you to pay me anything, right? Some people do. This particular couple did actually pay for a consultation. And then on the phone afterwards, I told them, hey, I don't want your money. Keep your money for the next couple of calls. 
that I'm going to give to you because you trusted me to help you with the situation. I'm going to keep pouring into you. I'm going to help you get to a positive cash flow position. Once you get to a positive cash flow position, you can pay me later, right? I don't mind that, right? I don't mind just saying, okay, we had three, four, five phone calls and then invoicing you at a later time. We're in a much better financial situation. But I'm only willing to do this for people who are willing to commit. I need to know that you're committed and you're not just gonna waste my time. I can't have people wasting my time, saying they're gonna do something, and then we get on a call months later and you still haven't done the thing. I could have helped another mother, I could have helped another husband, I could have helped another, another mom out there that was more serious, that would have done the work to get it done, right? So that's my action step for you, for those that are in a bad financial situation. For those of you who are making really good money, cash flow is hot and you're just looking to make a couple tweaks. Let's jump on a call. Let me help you out. Let's strategize together. Maybe you're looking for cash value, life insurance, designs, policies, different investments, different opportunities. Maybe you're someone that's doing really well, multiple six, seven figures, and you're like, hey, I just want to give. I want to figure out how I can help your ministry go, grow. Reach out to me directly so we can figure out how you can be a kingdom financier so you can help me help more people with their personal finances, become better stewards, make better decisions with their finances, ultimately creating financial freedom and independence so that they can be abundant givers as well and create that ripple effect, all right? So hopefully you enjoyed this video. Have a wonderful day. God bless, and we'll be talking soon.